we've heard about how you were offered this treatment into the bladder. How irritated was your bladder after you'd been through the surgery to get the biopsies and did it stop the bleeding having had the biopsies? Yeah, I didn't really notice uh, bleeding at all um, mm -hmm. after that point. How irritated? The treatment, the BCG treatment was oh, extremely uh, irritating. How soon after the biopsies did you start the treatment? Um, I'm sure it was probably within 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 a week or two or maybe or so. after vacation because we went away for a week. And uh, you, you said the treatment was quite a difficult treatment to go through. It was. It what was. did the treatment it, that, involve? The treatment involves uh, they prepare a uh, they prepare a uh, uh, a drug I guess. Um, uh, it's introduced via my, my penis and put in my bladder. And so they put a catheter, a, a catheter, catheter right, into the bladder, right, right. yeah. And they, 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 uh, they put the drug in. And um, like a rotisserie, I'm supposed to rotate every 15 <laughs> minutes. <laughs> right. To coat uh, the bladder walls. To coat the bladder walls. Initially, it's easy to do. Mm -hmm. But they want you to keep this in for two hours. I don't know if I've ever made two hours. The, uh, I don't think so. No, uh, no, no, I got close. Was it a painful procedure at the time or it was just... The procedure itself was fine. There was no pain, no pain. It was trying to retain this medicine inside your bladder okay. for a two hour period. The so, urge to yeah. urinate became so intense. Oh, really? Right. He, he yeah, was probably about after an hour. It was horrible. And uh, this treatment that you had, it was a course of treatments, not just a one-off treatment. Correct. Correct. And you had six treatments six initially. Six treatments, one every week. And um, before you started the treatment, did the urologist give you any idea about how successful this would be at controlling the cancer? Or did they already give you a heads up that more treatment may follow? Oh, a little bit of both, that, that this is the treatment that they have success with, but you know, it's not the only thing that, that, that they have that they could go back and, and we could repeat the process or see what's going on. He did say that my worst case scenario, maybe I may have to lose my bladder. That was, you know, put out on the table right. pretty early. So despite the difficulties of holding on to the bladder installation for the two hours and the irritation to your urinary tract, you persevered, you went oh, through absolutely. Oh. the four, six treatments. Oh. And then uh, after that, the uh, urologist had another look inside the bladder, did he, to see he if did. it worked? He did, he did. I guess the, the success rate that he was expecting, he didn't see. However, um, it still wasn't muscle invasive, so he wanted to give another treat, another go, another go around mm -hmm. with the treatment. And before we bring Dr. Plimat back to talk about the specifics of the treatment that you had, mm -hmm. during this treatment that you were obviously having in the urologist's office, were you able to work during the treatments or were your symptoms so bothersome that it was really affecting your you mean you mean after the right in the it, it, while you're well, going through treatments well, you're able to continue oh working. yeah yeah absolutely um yeah not, nothing really keeps me down um i had the uh i had the treatment in the office and the office is relatively close mm -hmm. so i drove home and it was in my house where i played uh rotisserie right. where, where i rolled <laughs> around and uh boy i i fought as hard as i could fight to keep that in me uh Unfortunately, never, never to fruition, but um, close, but, but never got there. And did you find that as you went through the different treatments, it became harder and harder yeah. to deal with the yeah. symptoms? Yeah, mm -hmm. very true. Yeah, exactly. Because they were dealing with a live virus, to, there was, I had a routine. I had a certain bathroom I used to clean the bathroom with bleach. Right. Dr. Plimet, let's just talk a little bit to, before we end the segment about this BCG treatment. Sure. What exactly is it and what's the goal of the treatment? So BCG has been around for a long time and the truth is we don't know exactly how it works on superficial bladder cancer. It is useful for bladder cancer that's in the first few layers of the bladder like yours was when it was diagnosed, but it works, we think, to almost irritate the bladder and cause inflammation that then brings in the immune system to that superficial layer of the bladder. And then the immune system, we think, takes care so, of that cancer. So this is an immunotherapy agent. And it's for, one of the first and oldest immunotherapeutics. It's been around for a long time. And for um, patients with but, bladder cancer who may be watching this segment, the, they will no doubt have done some background reading 
What's the association with TB? We know that BCG right. and TB, patients always ask, will I get tuberculosis? Right. Where does that come from? Because BCG is related to tuberculosis. It is not tuberculosis. It is not a weakened form of tuberculosis. It is its own entity. In fact, BCG was used in the past in some other countries to vaccinate against tuberculosis. Mm -hmm. So it is safe. Um, it is very, very unlikely to get any systemic infection from BCG and it does not put you at risk for tuberculosis or your family members. And for a patient who's had blood in the urine, irritated urinary symptoms, a biopsy, and then to put a chemical into a bladder that's raw and irritated so soon after treatment, does that make sense? Is that one of the reasons well, I why think so some of the irritation is from the cancer being there. So if BCG is effective at treating the cancer, patients actually can feel better mm -hmm. from successful cancer treatment. Mm -hmm. And again, the goal is to cure this, right? BCG, the intent of BCG is to cure superficial bladder cancer. We wish it worked all the time. It doesn't, unfortunately. But I think that curative intent makes it worth pushing through, as Michael did with symptoms, trying to get rid of it. Yeah. And this is not a treatment for all bladder cancers, Correct. is it? Right, it's not. So once bladder cancer is in the muscle of the bladder, the BCG, even if we were to put it in the bladder, wouldn't get mm -hmm. to all the cells. And so we know we need to take a different approach in that right. setting. And if you have a patient who has a superficial bladder cancer, but it's a low-grade cancer, would you still offer BCG if you're pretty confident that you've <laughs> removed the tumor? So I, I'm a medical oncologist. So I'm not the one offering the BCG. Um, I think that's a discussion that, that patients have with their urologists. Oftentimes you don't need it. You know, So it's not, again, it's not the treatment for cancer that's deep into the muscle and it's not always the treatment for very superficial cancer. And can Michael locally. explained that even before he started the BCG, his urologist had already pre-warned him that the BCG may not work and had right. set the scene that potentially more radical surgery, mm -hmm. removing the bladder may be necessary. I mean, is, is it fair to say that giving patients realistic expectations up front helps prepare those patients that may need to go on to having more radical surgery? I don't know that anything helps prepare folks for the road bumps along the way. I mean, Michael can speak to this in later mm -hmm. segments. It's hard to be ready for bad news when it comes, but I do think setting realistic expectations of what we can do, not promising that mm -hmm. everything will work. There are no guarantees, unfortunately, in our business. Just helps patients make the right decisions along the way with their family members. And one final question. Michael went through six treatments of BCG and- 12. And then had another six, six after correct. that, so 12 in total. How common is it for a patient who's already gone through six and failed and then they offered another six. Would it, is that the right thing to do, to give another six or? So typically, yes, yeah, six alone is not enough. Um, we say that the treatment has failed you, not that you failed the treatment, um, because it's certainly, you know, a, a, again, a failure of the treatment to control the cancer. But yes, dual induction cycles of BCG are common. It's at that point after the 12 treatments, I think, that there was a change in what was recommended to Michael for his bladder cancer. Mm -hmm. And obviously you have a huge number of tools in the toolbox now for treating patients who have fairly aggressive disease or advanced disease. If a patient comes to you and they've failed BCG, does that mean for the other treatment options that you have, is that a bad sign that if they fail BCG, which is an immunotherapy, does that mean they're more likely to fail the newer immunotherapies or is the future still bright for the other options that you can right. offer patients? So again, our patients don't fail. <laughs> the treatments fail them. And so we're really careful in the way we talk about failing BCG. We're trying to rephrase that language that, you know, when BCG fails our patients, then we look to other options. Right now, there is no a correlation between how patients respond to BCG and how their tumors respond to checkpoint inhibitors down the road. That makes perfect sense to me. It's a totally different mechanism and it's a totally different approach, topical versus systemic. So while we're looking to see how checkpoint inhibitors may interact with BCG in clinical trials right now, if BCG hasn't worked for a given patient, it doesn't mean that other immunotherapeutic mm -hmm. options won't work. So just to wrap up this segment, we know that BCG for many patients can be extremely helpful at controlling or curing the disease. But for even for those patients who fail BCG, the future is actually very bright in terms of what we can offer patients down the line with these newer 
immunotherapy treatments that we're going to be talking about in future segments. So I don't know about Bright, right? In the metastatic setting, it's a really different setting with a different set of expectations that we will talk about in future segments. For all patients, we hope BCG works for them. With any treatment, if it doesn't work, we flex and come up with something else. 